In this video, I want to talk you through some great ways of preserving mushrooms. To grow your own mushrooms is great and it's very rewarding. You can see them here and the speed at which they grow is mind blowing, but mushrooms don't store all that well after they've been harvested. And by the way, if you want to find out how mushrooms grow so quickly, check out this time lapse video in the link above. So in this video, let's have a look at what options you've got to preserve mushrooms for longer. There's some good reasons for looking at this, so you don't need to use all of the mushrooms you've bought all at once, which means there'll be less waste, of course. You might be able to make use of a great deal in the stores, decide you want to buy more mushrooms and then keep them somewhere so you've always got them on hand. And that, of course, means that you'll never get caught out when you need mushrooms for that recipe that you're cooking. You also get to taste and experience different ways of eating mushrooms, especially when pickling, for instance, and I'll come back to that later on in the video. And of course, if you run a mushroom business like we do, it can become a great complementary product to sell. So you could think of several mushroom snacks and I'll give you some good examples of that later on as well. Now let's look at extending the shelf life of mushrooms from the most basic, storing in a fridge, to freezing mushrooms. I'll also show you how you can cook mushrooms to extend the shelf life, as well as other ways of doing this, like pickling, fermenting them, making snacks, and even making tinctures, which is a way of making medicinal mushrooms. But first up, here's a fun fact for you. Mushrooms actually continue to grow after you've picked them, so they're still alive. And this, although refrigeration slows down their metabolism, this fact means that they're alive and you can actually use bits of fresh mushrooms to create your own do-it-yourself mushroom spawn. Check out our guide on how to do this using the link above. So if you enjoy videos like this on mushrooms and growing mushrooms and everything that comes with it, please do consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Let's go back to preserving mushrooms now. Let's start here, storing them in a fridge. If you're buying pre-wrapped mushrooms that come wrapped on a plastic tray, for instance, like you see in many stores, I found it the best way for you to just store the mushrooms is in, their, in the refrigerator, in their original packaging. So if you only plan on using part of your mushrooms, I'd leave the remaining mushrooms on their original little tub and simply re-wrap them with the plastic wrap that came with it. I found that if I simply leave mushrooms shrink wrapped as they came from the store, they can keep well in the fridge for sort of up to a week. But this does depend on the type of mushrooms you buy. So shiitake, for instance, keep better than oyster mushrooms. And these are the oyster mushrooms that you can see here, which have a shelf life of say three to four days or so in the fridge. Now, if you do buy your mushrooms loose, store them in the smallest size container that you've got. Don't use the lid that comes with it though. Just wrap it, like I mentioned, in some plastic wrap that came um, that you might have. But poke a few small holes in the plastic wrap with a toothpick, for instance, and this will mimic the kind of wrap that supermarkets use. The wrap that supermarkets use, for instance, is, is tends to be more breathable than you than your ordinary plastic wrap. And you can also use brown craft paper, like the one I've got here. That creates the same effect. I mean, that's got some permeability, and then that allows the mushrooms to breathe. Alternatively, you can store loose mushrooms in a Ziploc bag, for instance, but do leave it partially open. So this allows for the release of the ethylene gas that mushrooms produce at that stage. It's the same gas that fruits like bananas or tomatoes give off as they ripen. And this gives an escape for the excess ethylene gas and that will in turn allow your mushrooms for, to stay fresher for longer, but it will also avoid um, drying them out. So next up is freezing your mushrooms and the simplest way to freeze your mushrooms is just to freeze them raw of course without any addition, additional preparation but you can either chop them into slices or freeze them whole. This is the simplest way but do please note that it doesn't give you the best results. Instead you want to lay your mushrooms out on a tray lined with parchment paper, slide the entire tray into the freezer and this will individually flash freeze them and then you can take them out as frozen mushrooms of course, but put them in a bag, put them all together and before you do so try to remove as much excess air from the bag as possible so you've got a nice compact bunch of mushrooms but the flash freezing will allow them to, you could take them out of the, um, the bag individually. Now some mushrooms like mataki freeze better raw than most varieties. Raw frozen mushrooms are best if you want to use them in soups, casseroles or stews for instance. Basically any dish where the mushrooms won't be the main stars and where consistency doesn't matter as much. Since mushrooms are mostly made of water, they tend to get mushy when you freeze them raw. If you decide that you 
want to freeze your mushrooms for better results, then you'll want to blanch or saute them first. So how do you do this? Let's look at blanching first. So for mushrooms that are bigger than an inch across, you want to cut them into quarters or slice them up, as a quick blanching won't cook them all the way through. So when you're ready to blanch your mushrooms, place them in a steamer basket, place them above a pot of boiling water, and whole mushrooms will take about five minutes or so to blanch. Smaller button mushrooms, for instance, or mushrooms that you've cut into quarters or slices will take about three minutes. So once you've finished steaming your mushrooms, plunge them into a bowl of ice water for the same amount of time that you steamed them for. Then strain as much of the water off as you can and seal them into airtight containers or freezer bags, removing as much air as you can that will prevent freezer burn, basically. So blanched or steamed mushrooms won't be as soggy and mushy when you thaw them out compared to mushrooms that have been frozen raw. Now let's look at sautéing. Sautéing is cooking your mushrooms in a little bit of butter or hot oil before freezing them. You can also add any other seasonings, for instance salt and pepper that you desire whilst sautéing them, but I prefer to keep them more plain, in that, in that way you can use them in any recipe basically. So sautéed mushrooms will keep a firmer texture than either blanched or raw mushrooms, and that's my preferred way of keeping them. Now here's a little tip, you want to allow sautéed mushrooms to cool down on a plate lined with kitchen paper until they get to near room temperature. Then you can pack them into containers or airtight bags and try to get as much air out of your container as possible before you place them in the freezer. Just like raw mushrooms, you can also individually quick freeze your mushrooms that have been sautéed. Lay your mushrooms out on a tray lined with parchment paper and freeze and then you place them into the freezer bags once they're frozen. If you don't individually freeze your mushrooms before packing them, leave about half an inch of air space at the top of the containers because the mushrooms may expand a bit when they're cooling off. So those are some straightforward steps to take to preserve your mushrooms, right? But they're not the most imaginative ways, perhaps. So let's just take a minute to look at some other ways you can do it too. And let's start off with dehydrating mushrooms. Do this using a food dehydrator like the one we've got here. And the idea is to use a low heat to preserve the meat-like umami flavors that mushrooms have. And if you set this food dehydrator to about 45 degrees Celsius, that's 113 Fahrenheit, if you haven't got the dehydrator, you can mimic this by simply using your oven, of course. Leave the door slightly open to allow the excess moisture to escape. Either way, whichever way you use, so a dehydrator like this or your oven at home, it will take between 6 and 12 hours for your mushrooms to be fully dehydrated. I wouldn't exceed 50 degrees Celsius, which is 122 Fahrenheit. If you use too much heat, you will lose a lot of the flavour of your mushrooms. And start checking for dryness at around 6 hours or so. Take out any that you feel are fully dried and they should snap in half when you try to bend them and they should feel crispy as well. Once you remove your dried mushrooms from the oven or the dehydrator, just let them sit um, on, and cool down basically on the countertop until they reach room temperature for about an hour or so and they should be completely cool when you touch them. And once the dried mushrooms are cool, that's the point where you can store them in an airtight bag or a glass jar with an airtight lid. Keep your mushrooms in a cool dark place and you will have extended the shelf life quite a bit. So that's not the only way to dry mushrooms. I've done it in different ways as well. So at our urban farm, the one we used to run in a city close by here, we recycled tons and tons of coffee waste into mushrooms and we built this beautiful large dryer with plenty of shelf space and it had great results. Used only a very little bit of warm air. And an even simpler way is by using nets like the ones you can see here. You can place those in a pulley tunnel or a glass house and it works a treat. But do note, it may take a little longer at lower temperatures, more like two to three days to become fully dehydrated. So let's look at pickling and fermenting. So these are less conventional ways of preserving your mushrooms perhaps, but they are great ways to consider. They're very similar methods of pickling and fermenting, but there is a crucial difference. Pickling involves soaking foods in an acidic liquid. Most people use vinegar for this, so they achieve a sour flavor. And when foods are fermented, so not pickled, the sour flavor is a result of a chemical reaction between the food sugars and naturally present bacteria. So there's no need to add any acid like vinegar, for instance. Button mushrooms are small enough for you to pickle whole, but larger ones like portobello mushrooms, you probably need to slice them or quarter them before you do any pickling or fermenting. 
And with some mushrooms, like oyster mushrooms, I don't actually cut them at all. I just want to tear them apart because this preserves the fibers and provide a much better texture when you cook them. So if you pickle them, you want to start the process by gathering some herbs like bay leaves, some rosemary, garlic. You'll also want to get a, a mason jar that you can use and it should withstand extreme temperature changes. And you'll also need your jars to have lids that you can seal airtight. So start off by getting a good quality saucepan and pour in about 180 liter, milliliters of water and about half of that, so about 90 milliliters of white vinegar. Add your desired amount of spices to the brine as well as about one tablespoon of um, salt and one tablespoon of black pepper. Now put your mushrooms into the brine, bring the whole mixture to a boil over some high heat and then decide to reduce your heat and let the mixture just simmer for about 15 minutes or so. And after 15 minutes, take the, take the mixture out and pour it into a pickling jar. Now be careful because you might want to use a spoon to transfer the mushrooms so they don't splash when they fall into the jar. Then you can use a slotted spoon for instance to get any herbs left in the pan and add them to the jar too. So the temperature difference will seal the jar and keep things really nice and fresh. Wait about three days for your pickled mushrooms to absorb all of the spices and vinegar in the jar before giving them a try. Your jar will stay in the fridge for at least a month or so and that's a dramatic increase in shelf life of course. So I mentioned how similar fermenting mushrooms is. You just add salt to water and there's no need for vinegar but you can add a cabbage leaf for instance so the salt acts as an antimicrobial agent for bad bacteria whilst allowing the fermenting bacteria to do their job. For this process to happen, you'll need to leave it to stand for about three days or so. I've also seen somebody use the water in the mushrooms. Mushrooms have so much water in them, you can also sprinkle some salt on them to extract the water and that creates their brine then. One really important thing to consider, however, with both pickling and fermenting is that it changes the flavors of the mushrooms quite a bit. Do make sure you choose a method that you actually like the result of, of course. So I've got some pickled mushrooms here and just tasted them and they do actually, um, they're lovely, but they're certainly different from your fresh mushrooms. Let's move on to another option, making mushroom snacks or different kinds of mushroom products. Clearly another way to extend the shelf life of your mushrooms is just to take them as a raw product do something else with them. Some of these will involve cooking your mushrooms, but not all of them are methods. Things that come to my mind are mushroom jerky, which is what we've got here, and a whole bunch of people in our online course community have tried it this way. It's really quite a trendy thing, and I can understand why. There are no, numerous recipes that you can use, but all of them, essentially what you'll be doing is, you'll cook the mushrooms in boiling water, then marinating them with some soy sauce, for instance, a bit of vinegar, and add some spices that you fancy. Leave the whole bunch for about 12 hours or so, followed by um, then you put them in a dehydrator or an oven like I described earlier on in the video and the result can be absolutely amazing. So you can also make a mushroom pate of course or you might have heard of mushroom burgers but you don't need to limit yourself to any of those. You can also extend the shelf life by making crisps like these and they're just absolutely wonderful. Or you can add it in a powder form to your favorite cup of tea or coffee. It's a really clever way with some like the ones you see on your screen here. They've got the medicinal benefits of mushrooms and you can incorporate that into your daily life of course. I've made this bottle of mushroom tincture for instance and I take that daily only to access all of the great stuff. Um, there's reishi in here, cordyceps, maitake, turkey tail, even shiitake mushrooms and I won't talk you through the full detail of this since there's a separate video which I'll link to here. But I want you to realize that the process is not so difficult. It's a great way of always having access to the many medicinal benefits that mushrooms have on offer for you. And you don't need to worry about how to store them at all because something like this keeps for up to a year. Right, so I hope you picked up something new in this video. And if you're thinking of not just preserving your mushrooms, but also growing them yourself, something that I highly recommend you do, then check out our video on how to grow mushrooms at home. So check out the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and take good care.